What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Lost Judgment. We are heading back to Yokohama 699. We're gonna get the plan together and then we're gonna try to trick RK and the public security. No skateboard, so we're just running it. Ah, just the two I've been waiting for. Excellent work, by the way. Hey, got those burner phones ready? <laughs> of course I do. Who do you think I am? I still don't fully get what's going on. Yagami-san, what are we gonna do with these? Okay, I'll break it down. First, we call Kawana on one phone. Let's say this one here. Then we use this other phone to call Reiko Kusamoto. Using them that way. The phones won't be connected to each other, but their voices will be relayed so they can talk normally. Oh, okay. And then? If public security finds out Reiko Kusamoto's talking to Kawana, They'll trace the call without actually finding him. Then we can see exactly who they send without risk of being seen ourselves. Mm-hmm. I think I'm getting it. Surely you don't intend to do that here, do you? That would put a beacon on us for Kawana-san's enemies. Yeah, we'll do it somewhere remote. We need a place where nobody would raise an eyebrow at an army of public security boys. And it's gotta have a good vantage point. Hmm. There's a building under construction not far from here. It's late, so no one should be around that may get involved unintentionally. Where is it? It's right near Seirio High. There's a crane by the river, too. You'll know when you see it. Okay, you two stay put. I should be able to handle this alone. Uh, you sure about that? Let me at least put out a drone, Yagamishi, even if it isn't much. I'll use it to capture the faces of Kawana-san's pursuers. <laughs> That'll be good. Alright, plan has been explained. Let's go do it. <gasps> Kitty. Look who it is. Yeah. Who's a good boy? A paper mark carton. Paper milk carton. Yeah. This must be the construction site Tsukumo was talking about. This is Tsukumo. Yagamishi, I've confirmed your position. Yeah. I think I can spot whoever comes close from here. I'm gonna call Kawana on the burner now. Understood. It's Kawana. You ready? I'm about to call Reiko Kusamoto. Once you're connected, you take it from there. It's been five years since I last spoke to her. Yeah. Can't imagine this won't be awkward. I know. Okay, do it.
Yes, hello? This is Kitakata, from Kurokawa Academy. What? You'll have to forgive me for this, but the position I'm in required me to reach out to you. I would never have done this otherwise. I should also note, there's a high probability this phone call is being tapped. I see. Very well, then. It's been 13 years, Kusumoto-san. So it has. Kitakata-sensei. I've read about your accomplishments. To think you'd become a vice minister. You never really know how things are going to work out. Ah, uh, but that's not true at all, Kusumoto-san. You were always destined to move up in the world. I've got to be honest with you. A woman as virtuous and as capable as you deserves the world and then some. But... How is Mitsuru-kun? I'm afraid he's still asleep. Nothing's changed. <sighs> I see. I wish I had the words. What is it you wanted? If you've been watching the news, you've probably already heard. I've become a prime suspect for a crime. They think I murdered Yokosawa in her apartment. I've heard. Obviously, it wasn't me who killed her, of course. Do you happen to remember Sawakun by any chance? The girl from your class. She was the only one of those students who ever came to visit Mitsuru. But even then, that's been at least ten years now. I got a letter from her once. She wanted to tell me she'd become a teacher. But I never did reply. And that was the last I'd heard from her. I see. So back to my question. What do you want? I hope you weren't planning to ask me for a favor. I'm afraid the answer would be no. No, it's not that. It's just... I wanted to let you know that at some point... Someone may come to you to ask a few questions about me. I thought I should give you a heads up. I'll make every effort to ensure they won't cause any trouble for you, Kusumoto-san. I'm sorry about this. I'll try to handle it from my side. So in your opinion, then, do you believe anything related to you could cause me any trouble? Don't worry. I'm sure you'll be just fine. We're almost to the signal. Kill the headlights. Two cars inbound. Looks like we were right on the money. This proves Reiko Kusumoto's phone is compromised. And if there's one organization capable of tracing a call and moving on it, it's gotta be public security on the hunt Plan for the Public security is really coming straight to you by car? No. There's no way they can mobilize their people that quickly. My guess? It's gotta be the prefectural police that they've got in their pocket. Or it's just RK. Probably RK. I will say it's been great to hear your voice again. But this should be the last time you ever hear from me. I'll try my best. I understand. Goodbye. Oh yeah, definitely RK. Hey, look. It's a drone. It has a phone attached to it. Shoot it. Shoot it down. You sure? Uh, just take it down. Hurry it up. Hey, what the fuck are you aiming at? I can't hit it. It's too small. Shit. Yeah, you shouldn't just be shooting your gun Damn, at dude. building. How the hell are we supposed to chase down a drone? And where the fuck is this Kiwana guy? Who knows, man? They called us in to catch this shithead, but how the hell are we supposed to do that? It's fucked up. Do we look like spec ops? Yeah, right? But at least you gotta shoot that thing. <laughs> this is my second time, actually. I took a few shots at some kids in a park. <laughs> I aimed at the ground and sent those little shits running for their lives. <laughs> We're done here. Pack it in! That's six punks and only one gun between you by my count. Who the fuck are you? It was you guys in charge. I'm sure Kiwana would have had this whole thing solved a long time ago. Well, then again, I suppose I do have to give you credit for how fast you made it here. That was my gun, asshole! 
Who's the one giving the orders? You may as well just level with me. You guys are RK's bottom rung, right? It sounds like you must know Kuana. <laughs> well, I guess we're not gonna be leaving here empty-handed after all. Come on! We're taking this guy in, boys! Fuck him up! I'm ready, oh, I'm morons. ready, I'm ready. Let's play by you. Oh, two big health bars. Owie. Sledgehammer. <laughs> I just killed that guy. I just did a murder. <sighs> Who sent you here? The order came from the head honchos in RK. You mean Soma? Not that high up. It was one of the bosses. There's a bunch of them. What did they tell you to do once you found Kuwana? They just said to catch him. Well, they also made it very clear not to kill him. <laughs> like we'd pull the trigger. We never even heard what our cut was. Just another useless grunt. <laughs> Tell me, gentlemen, how would you feel if you found out you were just pawns in public security's game? Uh, we're playing what game now? I suggest you quit RK while you can. Go tell your buddies, get them out too. Otherwise, they'll keep you in the dark, use you and toss you aside. And then, you'll end up in a ditch there's no crawling out of. Yes. Pardon me. You would be Reiko Kusumoto, correct? Sir, it's a little late for this. And how'd you get in here in the first place? I've expressly forbid having visitors. <laughs> Calm now. I'm a coordinator with the National Police Bureau, but I'm sure you're familiar with my division of public security. Bondo is my name, ma'am. Are you now? Well, I'm afraid coordinator is rather vague. I have a more public-facing title as well, of course. But I'm trying to be discreet here, so let's not get bogged down with minor details. It's in our best interests. I'm afraid that won't help. I've already seen to that. What is this? There's a question I need answered with some urgency, Kusumoto-san. It concerns the disappearance of a certain individual. Huh. About five years ago, a man vanished off the streets of Kamurocho. I'm sure you'll recognize him. A former classmate of Mitsuru here, Shinya Kawai. I believe there are things you might know. I can say that with some level of certainty as a matter of fact.
a shadow looms over Yagami and Kuwana. Japan's National Intelligence Agency, Public Security, fixes its gaze on Reiko Kuzumoto of the Ministry of Health. Five years ago, Kuwana prompted her to take revenge on Shinya Kawai for pushing her son to the brink. Secrets can only lie dormant so long, and upon their waking, chaos ensues. Done it again, Tsukumo. Can't believe you found it. <laughs> I figured Mitsuru Kusumoto would be in one of the better hospitals around the health ministry. That narrowed it down to just a few locations. Then I pinpointed the exact one through sheer determination. And that led you to Toto University Hospital. So Mitsuru is still lying in a coma there? Yep. Reiko Kusumoto has been visiting her son every night for the past 13 years even after she became vice minister. If you gentlemen want to meet her in person, that would be your best chance. Yagami, you seriously think you can convince Reiko Kusumoto to turn herself in? Well, I'm gonna try at least. She's at the top of the food chain. If it comes out that she committed murder, the whole country's gonna lose it. If they hadn't tried to hide it, nobody else would have needed to pay for it. Sawa-sensei. Yeah, you're right. And if she confesses to killing Kawhi, public security will run out of reasons to keep defending RK. So in theory, that should free up the police to pursue Soma about Sawa-sensei. Totally agree with you there. But Kawana-san's against that, right? Didn't he say he wouldn't let her turn herself in? Yeah, that's why he's not in the loop on this. So, you're just gonna show up? You do know she's probably surrounded by public security at all times, don't you? Just means we gotta be prepared for that. Like the professional detectives we are. Prepared? How? <laughs> Just leave it to us. Yagami-san, I gotta go get ready. Let's meet at Toto University Hospital. Got it. See ya. <laughs> so what do you need from me in this, Yagami? You got any old acquaintances in RK? Think you can find out where Soma and Akutsu are? You forget who you're talking to? Why wouldn't I be able to cover that? I knew a few ex-Tojo guys who go in and out of RK on the regular. Thanks. But watch your back. If they find out you're spying on them, they won't like it. I'll be ready. Like the professional ex-Yakuza I am. See ya. <laughs> he's rough around the edges, but in the end he comes through. Yeah. Turns out he's got extra time on his hands. Why don't you hire him at your office, Yagamishi? <laughs> I'll talk about that with Kaito-san once he recovers. Anyway, sorry Tsukumo, but we have to take Sukiura from you again. <laughs> Why start apologizing now? It's all good. We'll talk again soon. Alright, so we need to head. My collection of things. Ah! Kitty. Nothing new. All right, where's the taxi? We're off. Oh, oh damn. to the hospital.
are you? Don't worry. I'll give it back to you after this. I'm sure it's bugged. And we wouldn't want anyone listening in now, would we? We'll take a few laps around the block, and then drop you back off at the hospital. Sorry, but we just need a bit of your time. Very well. Who are you people? We're just local detectives, but Kitakata Sensei is an acquaintance of ours. We know about Mitsurakun, and we know that five years ago, a man named Shinya Kawai mysteriously disappeared and died. I have no idea what you're saying. But you do. I know how this must come across right now, so I assure you, we aren't the ones posing a threat. Fine. What is it you want, then? All I want is the truth. In your own words. About Shinya Kawai, and how you carried out his murder. You're mistaken. I didn't do it. We were told the other day you received a call from Kitakata Sensei, didn't you? He goes by the name Kawana now, and works as a handyman in Ijincho. He made that call because we needed to confirm something. Confirm what? Whether or not you were being watched by public security. <sighs> public security, you say? Maybe she already has a hunch. As it turns out, you are. Your cell phone is bugged. It can even use GPS to trace who's on the other end of the line. That kind of trace is only possible with cooperation from the cellular providers. Unless you're public security, who could pull something like that off in secret. They want to hit you where you're vulnerable. And that's what you are now, after Kuwana. Do you understand, Kusumoto-san? You must really be something special. You were never in this job for yourself. It fell into your lap as your predecessors fell like dominoes. That's why you don't owe anyone anything. You're free of constraints. And Mitsuru-kun's tragedy even gained you public sympathy on top of it. Combine all that with a capable bureaucrat like you, there's no telling what you could accomplish. You're cleaning up house, tackling the revolving door problems. Things you know are the right moves, but with no regard for the consequences. I understand even the cabinet gauges your opinion, since you have so much public support. But I think that's also made you some enemies. Most likely whoever's holding public security's leash. I have more than a few enemies. I'm well aware of that. And okay. I have no doubt public security would comply with them. To be quite frank, public security only exists to maintain the status quo. The establishment is made up of various powers which control politics and finance. But naturally, each branch has its own agendas, goals, ideas of justice, which leads to all sorts of issues and hindrances, which you call constraints. The more individuals who make up society, the more unavoidable that is. Are you implying it's public security's job to loosen those constraints? Hmm. There is more to it than that. The world we live in requires all kinds of value systems to coexist, even in chaos. But if you loosen the constraints too far, the fall of the state is inevitable. In that regard, public security's role is to stabilize and maintain the state even while bound by constraints. In other words, the constraints of these powers are precisely what are protected by public security. So the fact that I am not caught up in all that does, indeed, make me something of a pesky foreign object. A pesky foreign object. I see. So to these establishment people, you're something to be excised. Hmm? I guess there's bullying among adults in high places, too. Yeah. Now we know why they were looking for any kind of weakness in you. And that's when they turned the spotlight on Shinya Kawai's disappearance. An event that was triggered by Akihiro Ohara's case. You know the one, I presume? Yes. An active duty policeman exacted revenge on the bully who drove his son to suicide. Your enemies must have heard that and thought to themselves, what would Reiko Kusamoto have done to her son's bully? 
I'm guessing that's what prompted public security to make their move. As the details of Ahara's case came to light, a group of thugs calling themselves RK started looking for Shinya Kawai. All to find out that he was kidnapped five years ago. Probably killed. I never did anything out of revenge. Even after finding out Kawai disappeared, public security still had to verify it. But if they found out you were involved, that'd be a win for them. They finally know Reiko Kusumoto's weakness. How long are you going to keep talking? Forever! As public security figured out, the bullying cases involving Toshiro Ihara and your son share a common link. That link being Sawa-sensei. She was Mitsuru-kun's classmate and Toshiro Ihara's teacher. Not only that, she was also linked to Ahara's murder victim, Mikoshiba. She was his master teacher. So, not long after the murder, RK came to Ijincho and broke into her home. That must have been when they got Kawana's name out of her. I think Sawa-sensei suspected that Kawana was involved in Mikoshiba's murder. Then Soma steps in, with his professional interrogation skills, to beat and scare her into spilling everything. Kusumoto-san, you knew she was killed, right? Kawana should have told you over the phone. Wait, are you... not one of his colleagues? He said he wouldn't cause me any trouble, and that he would never call me again. Kawana and I are competitors on a temporary ceasefire. We're not colleagues. Oh, um, um. Have they contacted you? Has anybody from public security contacted you? Have you been approached by any strangers? I have my suspicions. What were their names? <sighs> I imagine what they wanted was to exploit your weakness to control you. Because if all they wanted was to eliminate you, some kind of accident would be easily arranged. Yes. I suppose you're right. Do you have any idea what these people are after? Do you mind sharing? What they want is control of the pension fund, which is under the health ministry's jurisdiction. Pension fund? An independent agency within the ministry manages the national pension fund. It's taxpayer funded, and it's worth 160 trillion yen. What? And certain groups want to take bigger risks with that money in order to generate more profit. In other words, they want the health ministry to use taxpayer money to gamble. They believe that's the only way to rebuild Japan's faltering economy and secure the future of this country. I mean, would it work? Of course. If the gamble actually pays off. But if we lost the gamble, then we wouldn't be able to guarantee anything for the citizens of this country in their golden years. That's why the health ministry manages those funds conservatively. Even if it means the returns are lower. Okay. I'm starting to understand now. You do? Don't leave me in the dust, Yagami-san. To be able to gamble all this taxpayer money to save the economy, they need a change of management. And here's Kusumoto-san, head of the office. And she's beyond the control of even the ministers. Her position has the power to take action to override the way the pension fund is managed. But not only does Kusumoto-san have the power, she has the support of the people. If a new vice minister were to try it, they'd be stopped cold by the constraints. So that's why they wanted to find her weakness and exploit it? Exactly. And if the 160 trillion yen gamble were to fail, they can blame the whole thing on Kusumoto-san anyway. Okay. Oh, wow. 160 trillion. <sighs> I'm guessing they've already contacted you about it? That's an assumption. I have to ask you about Shinya Kawai. You killed him five years ago. With your own hands, didn't you? 
I understand what your feelings must be towards Kawaii, but was that really the only answer? If you've spoken to Kitakata Sensei, then you must know about the video of how Mitsuru was treated. I do. Aside from Kawaii, the other students pretended like nothing happened. They took no responsibility. They put on their sad faces, and they came to visit Mitsuru at the hospital. But looking back on it now, I don't think they really wanted Mitsuru to wake up. In fact, that's what they were checking on. And what did I do? I bowed my head and thanked them. It was only later that Kitakata Sensei showed me the video. That's when I knew that those kids going unpunished was wrong. And your solution was to pull them into the quagmire? Make them accomplices in murdering Kawai? If you already know so much, what more do you need to ask? How's your son doing now? He could wake up any minute now. Of course. That's been true for the last 13 years. I see. We transferred him to Toto University Hospital just this year, hoping they could spur his recovery. But it turns out they don't do anything much different from the previous hospital. All I can do is wait. I get it now. Let me reiterate, we are not your enemy. Then please, let me go. Anything you want me to tell Kawana? I do. He needs to run, far away. Public security has their sights on him. His capture is not a question of if, but when. He's in danger if he remains in the country. And once public security has him, they will extract everything he knows. You mean he'd be tortured? Yes. Somewhere well beyond the public eye. No one can withstand what they'd do. He'd tell them everything. And as for me... They would expose your vulnerability, making you their pawn. Most likely. They'd gamble away the taxpayers' money, and I'd never purge the corruption in the health ministry. I get that. But what does it matter? What? Because in my opinion, you need to turn yourself in, Kusumaro-san. <laughs> you want me to admit to manslaughter? You think I killed a real man? I say he was less than one. Shinya Kawai. He was little more than a subhuman brute. And you saw it. You saw what that brute did to my son. I hated Kitakata-sensei. He was an incompetent teacher. An idiot who turned a blind eye to Mitsuru being tortured. But that changed when he suddenly showed up eight years later. And then he showed me that video. He said, every bully in that video, they deserve to be punished. That it was the only way to get closure. You took him up on it? But you of all people should have known better. True. You're right about that. I struggled with it quite a bit. It's an unconscionable act, no matter how deep your animosity runs. But Kitakata Sensei's words hung on. I couldn't get them out of my head. I saw for myself. I went to Kamrocha, where I'd heard Kawai was working, at a girls' bar. So you know, after Mitsuru jumped that day, Kawai came to me in tears to apologize. I hadn't seen him in all that time. If he'd frozen in place when he saw me, if he'd been the slightest bit apologetic, I might have been able to stay my hand. I take it he didn't do any of that. <laughs> right. He didn't even recognize my face. And that's hardly the worst part of it, actually. When he saw me, he took me for some bawdy cougar on the prowl for young men. If you got the cash, I'll show you a good time, he said. 
All those tears he'd shed years earlier were a farce. But I knew them. Deep down, I'd already known that. That was it. That was the moment I lost all doubt about killing him. And as for those other kids who bullied Mitsuru, they should thank me they didn't share his fate. But that's why. That's why I don't feel like I have any sins to atone for. Every night, every night, I pray he will wake up. What more can you ask me to endure? Kawana said something similar. But you think you can repeat all that? This time say it to her. Isn't that... Sawa-san? You and Kawana can congratulate yourselves. You got vengeance on a monster. But what you're choosing not to see is that your actions had consequences for her. It's vicious. I've seen this before. Justice for one at the cost of another. Someone innocent always pays the price. I won't... I won't just sit here and watch as history tries to repeat itself. This phone isn't being traced by anyone. So... If you have a change of heart, just give me a call before you turn yourself in. That's all I had to say. We're back. Right here, okay, Yagami-san? Yeah. I'm gonna go talk to Kawana. Need to tell him I met with Reiko Kusamoto. He's gonna be pissed, you know? He's gonna try to rip you a new one. That's true. So you might want to sit this one out. <laughs> you sure? Because I'll totally take you up on that. Kwana's like right there. Alright, so we're gonna call this episode here. Hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next one. It's so cinematic in these last few episodes. <laughs>